you, New Hampshire Democrats. It is so great to be here with all of you and in the state that had the audacity to send not one but two women to the United States Senate in Maggie Hassan and Jean Shaheen. Thank you so much. You know, New Hampshire, I started my campaign in the middle of a Minnesota blizzard. And there were four inches of snow on my head because I wanted to impress New Hampshire. And a lot of people predicted I wouldn't even make it through that speech. But I made it through that speech. And I made it through the summer. And I made it to that debate stage last night. And we have momentum like never before. We have beaten the odds every step of the way because we know in our hearts, and I'm speaking to all of the supporters there for all of the candidates right now, we know, we know that what unites us is bigger than what divides us. We know that as a party. We know that. And we know that yes, this election is an economic check on this president because people are not sharing in the prosperity across this nation. But we also know that this election is a patriotism check. It is a decency check on this president. And what unites us more than anything is that we know that the heart of America is bigger than the heart of the guy in the White House. We know that. Every one of us knows that. And Donald Trump's nightmare is that our fired up Democrats will march to victory with independence of New Hampshire, right? With people from all over this state and that we will win big in November. That is his nightmare. So, what will I do? I will pass a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United. We will get that done to get the big money out of our politics. What unites us is to stop his shameful attempts to repeal the Affordable Care Act and kick people off of their health insurance for pre-existing conditions. That is wrong and we will stop him. We will take on Big Pharma to bring down the cost of prescription drugs. We will take on the NRA to pass gun safety legislation. That is our optimistic agenda for this country. Because we know, as a party, that we are not going to be able to divide the divider in chief. We're not going to be able to out divide him, no. We're not going to be out dividing someone that actually wakes up every morning and sees who he can take on next, see who he can blame next. Let's see what the list is. He blames Barack Obama, right? He does that all the time. He blames immigrants. He blames the head of the Federal Reserve that he appointed. He blames the generals that he commanded. He blames the entire kingdom of Denmark. Who does that? He even blamed the Prime Minister of Canada for cutting him out of the Canadian version of Home Alone 2. He does that. He blames people. And what do we have to offer instead? We are a, bar a party that brings people with us instead of shutting them out. And you know that is something that I have done. I have won in the rural areas, big time. I have won in the suburban areas. I have won every single election I've ever run back to fourth grade. Now, Democrats, Democrats, we have to remember that when we bring people with us, that we put someone on the ticket that gets it, that can bring those people back. And you know my background. I am the granddaughter. Exactly. I am, hi Bernie people. I am, 
I am the granddaughter of an iron ore miner. I am the daughter of a teacher and a newspaper man. I am the first woman elected to the United States Senate from the state of Minnesota, and I am a candidate for President of the United States. And that, that is because we live in a country of shared dreams, that no matter where you come from or who you know or where you worship or who you love, that you can make it in the United States of America. I will end with this. I told this story last night as I was spending a lot of time during that impeachment trial thinking. We all spent a lot of time thinking. And I thought of the fact that we got a president that literally thinks he can bulldoze over our democracy, that he can rise above the rule of law that it doesn't matter to him, that he can decide who gets the American dream. And I thought of that story of FDR. And when he died, they put his body on a train and people stood spontaneously by the train track to show their respect. And there's a guy standing there, a regular guy, sobbing with the hat in his hands. And this reporter says to him, sir, did you know the president? And the guy says, no, I didn't know the president. But the president knew me. <laughs> what is missing, Democrats of New Hampshire, with this guy is empathy. What is missing is a sacred trust between this president and the people. And I will tell you this, if you are having trouble deciding you fill your refrigerator or your prescription, I know you and I will fight for you. If you can't decide between long-term care for your parents or child care for your kids, I know you and I will fight for you. If you can't decide if you're going to be able to stretch your paycheck to pay the rent, I know you and I will fight for you. That is how we win this election. Democrats, that is how we win. So I'm asking you to join our fight. I don't have the biggest bank account, if you didn't notice. I'm not the tallest person in the room. But what I've got is grit. The grit you get from a Minnesota blizzard. The grit you get from spending your life, not an easy life, fighting and overcoming adversity. The grit you get when you don't have that perfect birth when your daughter's born and you get kicked out of the hospital while she's in intensive care and your first political moment is your life is to pass one of the first bills in the country guaranteeing new moms and their babies a 48-hour hospital stay. That is grit. That is grit. And that is what I bring to this ticket. I picked the color green because it is the color of my political mentor, Paul Wellstone. He brought people with him. I am asking you to come with us. Let's go, vote, I ask for your vote. Thank you, New Hampshire. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, New Hampshire. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Shaheen. It's not often you get to speak after someone so respected they name the event after her. 
Thanks for all the work you and the delegation are doing, Senator Hassan, Congressman Pappas, and my good friend whose support I am so thankful to have, Congresswoman Andy Custer. Thank you. And thank you, New Hampshire, for welcoming us to this state over the course of the last year. I am here one more time to ask you to join me, not only to end the era of Donald Trump, but to launch the era that must come next. Now, I know some are asking, what business does the South Bend mayor have seeking the highest office in the land? You don't have an office in Washington. You don't have decades of experience in the establishment. The city you're the mayor of isn't even the biggest city in the country. It's more like Manchester, New Hampshire. To which I say that is very much the point. Because Americans in small rural towns, in industrial communities, and yes, in pockets of our country's biggest cities, are tired of being reduced to a punchline by Washington politicians and ready for somebody to take their voice to the American Capitol. And that is how we are going to defeat Donald Trump. How would you like to see a president who cuts taxes for giant corporations have to compete against someone who actually lives in a middle-class neighborhood in the American Midwest and is ready to call him out? How would you like to see a president who likes to cloak himself in religion? This president have to stand next to someone not afraid to remind fellow believers that God does not belong to a political party in this country. How would you like to see a president who avoided serving when it was his turn? have to square off against a war veteran prepared to illustrate why there is nothing patriotic about pardoning war criminals while punishing war heroes. We will beat this president. With a president this disruptive, we cannot run the risk of trying to defeat a fundamentally new challenge by relying on the familiar playbook from before. With a president this divisive, we cannot risk dividing Americans' future further, saying that you must either be for a revolution or you must be for the status quo. Let's make room for everybody in this movement. This is our one shot, our one chance to defeat Donald Trump. And there is an American majority that is unified not just in who we are against, but in what we are for. Because we are for higher wages and the empowerment of workers. We are for honoring our troops by putting an end to endless war. We are for our teachers and prepared to back them up with a secretary of education who believes in public education. We are for creating an American experience where your race has no bearing on your health 
or your wealth or your experience with law enforcement. That is the America we must build together. And we cannot wait any longer. The 10-year-old who asked me what we're going to do so his family can afford insulin cannot wait for us to act to ensure there is no such thing as an uninsured American and no such thing as an unaffordable prescription. The 13-year-old who told me that she asked for a Kevlar backpack for Christmas cannot wait for us to act to protect her school from gun violence. We must act now. I am asking for your support because I believe that the purpose of the presidency is not the glorification of the president. It is the empowerment and the unification of the American people to tackle these big challenges. And my belief My belief in this America is not the product of my age. It's the product of my experience. If you believe in an American future defined by belonging, this is our chance. If you believe in an American politics defined by boldness, this is our chance. If you believe in an American future defined by unity, this is our chance, New Hampshire. New Hampshire on Tuesday, let's make history and let's go on to defeat Donald Trump in November. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Hello, New Hampshire. It's great to be here with you tonight. One reason is you know how to run elections. You know how to run primaries. You have an incredible delegation in Jeannie Shaheen and Maggie Hassan and Chris Pappas and Annie Custer. We'll give them a big round of applause. They're one of the best in the country. <laughs> Folks, I think you all know what's at stake in this election. We all agree on it. We all know that we cannot sustain four more years of President Trump as President of the United States of America. We know, the people of New Hampshire know better. Nobody takes your responsibility more serious than you do up here in New Hampshire. You think for yourself, you know our party, and you know your neighbors. I've said many times, America's character is literally on the ballot. You know, we have to act. You know, the man I met in Claremont about, I don't know how many days ago, pulled me aside and said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm losing my job. I can't, I don't know how to tell my family. What do I say? What do I do? How do I do it? It was an incredibly emotional situation. And I said, look, I understand. I told him about my dad when he had to make what I call the longest walk up a short flight of stairs in the kid's bedroom to say, Joey, 
I don't have a job. You got, we got to move. We can't live here anymore. We got to move. And he said, but everything's going to be okay. And he meant it. It took him three years moving to Delaware to be able to get us a house to live in, but he was confident to be okay. But how many people today are able to look their children in the eye faced with that kind of crisis and say, it's going to be okay? They don't think it's going to be okay because we made it so much harder in this country under this president to, quote, make it okay. Or not long ago, the matter of fact, just a couple hours ago, like about 10, 12 hours ago, Jill and I and our grandchildren stood in line in Manchester for food for children. Bitterly cold, 22 degrees, the wind blowing. And you see all these little children. You see them standing in line, huddled, no gloves, freezing to death, waiting to pick up a cardboard box, not, have, not able to pick it up, kicking it along the way so they could put bread in it. They could put donuts in it. They could put things that they were able to get for food. In the United States of America, watching women, a woman with barely a sweater on, holding her child tightly, and you could see the tears coming down her eyes as she picked up bread. What kind of bread? The men who came along, unable to lift their heads up and look, just thinking, my God, I thought to myself, this is the United States of America. How can that be happening in the United States of America? Hundreds and hundreds of people in that bitter cold with nothing, nothing, nothing to look forward to in their minds, just to get a little sustenance. You know, one of the guys walked up and gave me, it was so cold, gave me a skull cap. And I thought to myself, why do I have this skull cap? I gave it to one of the kids. Think about it. New Hampshire, the United States of America, a line that lasted and lasted and lasted and lasted with no hope in sight for these people. This is not the America any of us grew up in, that we believe in. This is not who we are. Or the other day, actually it was about three days ago, what happened? I was standing and I was being introduced in Claremont, I believe it was. And I, then I, a, 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 a guy, a woman, they said, there's a woman going to introduce you. And she, her name was Chrissy. And she looked at me and she said, I'm going to tell my story. She was a violence against women victim, battered and beaten by her husband. She said, she walked out and she was on the street with a little baby, nowhere to go, nowhere to go. Then she picked up a paper and she looked down and she said, I don't know this guy, but he's writing the Violence Against Women Act. He's going to find me a house, find me a home. Well, guess what? Guess what? She said it saved her life, but she had a mental and physical abuse and an impact on her child. But at least she got her off the street. The vast majority of children on the street are there because their mothers are being abused and battered. How many of them are suffering from post-traumatic stress with us doing nothing about it? And the Violence Against Women Act I wrote is sitting in the United States Senate, not being passed today because they want to give allow boyfriends who beat up their wife to own guns that kill their spouses. Folks, we got to change this. This is why we're all running, every one of us. This is what this is about. It's not about something else. It's not about the other way. And folks, we're being led by a president, a president who absolutely has no empathy, no sympathy, who mocks people, who makes fun of people with disabilities, who does everything he can to demean. He doesn't have a shred of decency in him. He speaks to women like in such a degrading terms. That's not how we were raised. That's not how you were raised here in New Hampshire. That's not how I was raised. That's not the America any of us know. And it doesn't represent New Hampshire values either. You know, I've lost a lot in my lifetime like a lot of you have. I lost my wife and daughter in an automobile accident. I lost my son to a long bout with brain cancer when he came home from Iraq. But I'll be damned if I'm going to stand by and lose this election to this man. We cannot let it happen. We cannot let it happen. The character of this country is on the ballot. We must defeat Donald Trump. There is no choice. The man has a, not a shred of decency. So we have to stand up against bigotry, hatred, 
We have to stand up against the abuse of power. This man derides people. It's time to heal America. And only we, the Democratic Party, can do it, and we must do it now. So stand up, take it back. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Let's go do it now, now, now. Hello, New Hampshire! It is phenomenal to be here with you tonight, and thank you, Yang Gang. I love campaigning here in New Hampshire for so many reasons, but one reason, I don't know how many of you knew this, I went to high school right here in the state. I graduated from Phillips Exeter Academy in 1992. And it's a thrill to be campaigning here tonight because you all are among the most powerful and influential people in our country today. I know it may not feel like it, but I did the math, New Hampshire. Do you know how many Californians each of you is worth? 1,000 Californians each. So look around the stadium tonight. How many of us are here together? I'm going to give a Trumpian estimate. There are 80,000 people here tonight. It's the biggest crowd anyone has ever seen. There are legitimately 7,000 people here tonight, which is like 7 million, Amer 7 million Californians in voting power. That's the power you all have to move our country forward and address a challenge, a problem that we have been struggling with for the last several years. And that problem, that challenge is this. Why is Donald Trump our president? Uh, if you were to turn on cable news, you would think he's our president because of some combination of Russia, racism, Facebook, the FBI, the Electoral College, and on and on. But we know different. I'm a numbers guy in New Hampshire. I was well educated here. And the numbers tell a very clear and direct story as to why Donald Trump is our president today. He is our president because we eliminated four million manufacturing jobs in this country in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Missouri, Iowa. And it happened here in New Hampshire earlier on. You all lost 12,000 manufacturing jobs in the northern part of the state. And when you go to those towns after the mill closed, the shopping center closed, people left, the school shrank, and that town has never recovered. The same thing has happened in Missouri, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan. This is why Donald Trump is our president. And this is what we must solve for. We are making a mistake when we act like Donald Trump is the source of all of our problems, New Hampshire. He is not. He is a symptom of a disease that has been building up in our communities for years and decades. So the question is, how do we cure the disease? If you know anything about me and my campaign, you've heard that I'm running for president saying we should give every American $1,000 a month from age 18 until the day they die. And I know this seems like an awfully dramatic policy, but this is not my idea and it's not a new idea. Thomas Paine was for this at the founding of our country. Martin Luther King fought for it in the 60s. Milton Friedman and a thousand economists endorsed it. It passed the U.S. House twice in 71. And one state actually has a dividend now where everyone in that state gets between one and $2,000 a year, no questions asked. And what state is that? And how do they pay for it? And what is the oil of the 21st century? Technology, data, AI, self-driving cars and trucks. A study just came out that said that our data, your data, is now worth more than oil. How many of you saw that study? How many of you got your data check in the mail last month? If you didn't get the data check, where did it go? 
Amazon, Facebook, Google, Apple, and the trillion dollar tech companies that are paying nothing or next to nothing back into our country. This is what we must solve for in New Hampshire. We have record high corporate profits in this country right now. What else are at record highs? Suicides, drug overdose, substance abuse, stress, financial insecurity, student loan debt, medical bankruptcy, mental illness, depression. What are at record lows in the United States of America right now? Getting married, having a child, starting a business for a young person. We are following GDP and corporate profits off a cliff, New Hampshire. They're leading us the wrong direction. I know how off base our economic measurements are because of my own family. My wife is at home every day with our two boys, one of whom is autistic. How much is her work valued at in our market economy? Zero. Evelyn gets a zero, as does every other stay-at-home parent in our country. How about caregivers taking care of ailing loved ones? Zero. Also zero. How about volunteers and activists trying to make things better in our communities? Zero. How about coaches and mentors investing in our kids? Zero. How about most artists? And increasingly, in New Hampshire, this is a problem you should care deeply about. How about local journalists? It is very, very hard to have a democracy function when people don't actually know what's going on in their community. These are the things we claim to value most in our lives, our children, our families, our community, our democracy, and they're getting zeroed out one by one by one. That is what we must reverse on Tuesday, we have to let our fellow Americans know that economic value and human value are not the same things, and that we each have intrinsic value as Americans, as people, and as owners and shareholders of the richest country in the history of the world. New Hampshire, I am not running for president because I dreamt about being president. Those were not the conversations in the Yang household. My parents were not like, you're gonna be president someday. They were more like, you're terrible, go clean your room. <laughs> I'm running for president because like so many of you here tonight, I'm a parent and a patriot. I have seen the future that lies ahead for our kids and it is not something I'm willing to accept for them. They deserve better and we must give them better starting on Tuesday. New Hampshire, Donald Trump is our president today because he had a very simple, powerful, compelling message for our country. He said he was going to make America great again. What did Hillary Clinton say in response? America is already great. You remember that? That response did not work for many Americans because the problems in our communities are all too real. We have to acknowledge their depth and severity and reality, but then we need real solutions that will actually move our country forward. What were Donald Trump's solutions? Build a wall, turn the clock back, bring the old jobs back. New Hampshire, you know we have to do the opposite of these things. We have to turn the clock forward. We have to accelerate our economy and society to rise to the real challenges of the 21st century, like climate change. We have to evolve in the way we see ourselves and our work and our value. I am the ideal candidate for this job, New Hampshire, because the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. Thank you all very much. Let's make America think harder and move this country forward on Tuesday. Let's give our kids a future. We will actually be proud to leave to them. Thank you, New Hampshire. I love you. Hello, you guys. Hello, New Hampshire. Let me start by saying that every single Democrat running remains a million times better than the criminal in the White House. And let me say, I know that our rights are being trampled on. We have a right as Americans in the 21st century to affordable health care. 
We have a right to clean air and clean water. No one gets to poison you with PFAS. We have a right to an equal vote. They can't take it away from college students in New Hampshire anymore. We have a right to a living wage in the United States. $7.25 minimum wage is ridiculous and immoral. And we have a right to quality public education, including universal pre-kindergarten for every kid in the United States. We know that Donald, I said last night on TV, Donald Trump can win unless we kick his ass on the economy. He's, if you guys saw the union leader yesterday, he took out a full page ad. The top of it was, Democrats will kill New Hampshire jobs, and the bottom half was how great he was. We're going to have to kick his ass on the economy and send him home in November. <laughs> so let me just say, for those of you who don't know me, my mom taught in the New York public schools, and when she retired, she taught the prisoners in the Brooklyn House of Detention. My dad graduated from college at the age of 18. He became a lawyer, he quit the law to go into the Navy, and he ended up prosecuting Nazi war criminals after the war. And you know what he told me? He said, if it ever comes up, start the need to impeach movement to get rid of Donald Trump. When you see something wrong in the United States of America, fight it. I started a business. I built the business, I walked away from the business, I took the giving pledge to give the bulk of my money away while I'm alive to good causes, and for 10 years, I've organized coalitions of working people and union members to beat corporations. And let me tell you this, we've never lost. We've beat the oil companies, we've beat the tobacco companies, we've beat the drug companies, and we beat the utilities. They're just not that smart. We can beat them every time. So, let me say this. That's, as an outsider, what I've done, and as an outsider, I will go and beat those corporations in Washington, D.C. That's why I'm for term limits. 12 years, Congress people and senators, you want bold change, get new and different people in charge. Six words to argue for term limits. Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, Ted Cruz. Term limits. So let me say this. I'm also the only person who's running for president who will say, climate's my number one priority. It has to be. It has to be. We could end the world. But we can do it in a way that creates four and a half million good paying union jobs, the highest percentage of union workers in the United States since 1945, and we start in the black and brown communities that are being poisoned every day through the air and water. We win on climate. But we know Mr. Trump is running on the economy. We have to kick his ass when he lies about the economy. I can do it. 30 years in business, I can do it. When he says the economy's growing, the answer is, but the money's only going to rich people. When he says unemployment's low, the answer is yes it is, but you can't live on the jobs at 7.25 an hour. When he says the stock market's up, it's like, sure the stock market's up, the rich people own the stock, and in fact it's up because you gave them the biggest tax break in history. We have to kick his ass on the economy, and we have to pull together the gloriously diverse Democratic Party. We don't win unless everybody shows up in November 3rd, 2020, and we outnumber them at the polls. That's how we win. So when we're thinking about where we are right now, when we're looking at who to nominate, we're all better than Mr. Trump by a million times. A million times. The question is, we should only nominate someone who can kick his ass on the economy, and I can do it, 
and we've got to pull together this fantastic, diverse party, and I can do it. We have to show up in November 20 and not just beat Trump. We got to get rid of the whole gang that just said in impeachment, we're going to break our oath. We're going to ignore the evidence. We're not going to permit witnesses. We're going to do the wrong thing for the Republic so the Republican Party stays in power. So I'm asking you guys, as Democrats in New Hampshire on Tuesday, let's go show up and kick their ass. That's the job. Kick their ass on Tuesday. Kick their ass next month. Kick their ass in November. That's the job of Democrats. I can do it. Let's do it. Democrats, we got, we got two jobs. Okay, okay. New Hampshire Democrats, we've got two jobs. In November, first, beat Donald Trump. And second, re-elect Gene Shaheen, take back the Senate and put Mitch McConnell out of a job. We've had three years now of Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell. In fact, in fact, it was exactly three years ago, to yesterday, that Mitch McConnell pitched me off the floor of the United States Senate for reading a letter from Coretta Scott King. Now, Mitch McConnell said those words that women have put on t-shirts, have embroidered on pillows, and have had tattooed on their bodies. Nevertheless, she persisted. <laughs> now, there are a lot of people right now who are worried that this fight against Donald Trump may not be winnable, but I've been winning unwinnable fights pretty much all my life. Won the fight to get a consumer agency to keep banks from cheating people. Go CFPB. Won the fight to hold corporate executives responsible. Yes, I'm looking at you, CEO of Wells Fargo, who got fired and won the fight to take back a Senate seat from a popular incumbent Republican, bye-bye Scott Brown. Even so, there are a lot of people who talk about who, what races aren't winnable or what kind of people can't win. The way I see it, they're gonna keep saying that right up until we get in the fight, we persist, and we win. Now, it's been three long years of Donald Trump, and a lot of people around this country are afraid. They're afraid for their families and afraid for their neighbors. They're afraid for children locked in cages down at our border, afraid for children in lockdowns in our public schools, afraid for women, 
afraid for people of color, afraid for LGBTQ people, afraid for trans people, all of whose rights are up for grabs in this Supreme Court, afraid for our country and afraid for our planet. And the danger is real. Our democracy hangs in the balance. So it's up to you, New Hampshire. It's going to be up to you. What do you do at this moment? Do you back up? Do you lean back? Or do you get in the fight? Me, I'm getting in the fight. I'm fighting back. Because fighting back is an act of patriotism. We fought back against a king to build this country. We fought back against the scourge of slavery to protect this union. We fought back against a Great Depression to rebuild our economy. And we fought back against fascism to protect our democracy. Americans are at their best when they see a problem and they fight back. That's who we are. This is not a time for small ideas. This is not a time to nibble around the edges of problems. This is not a time to be vague and elusive. This is a time to step up and when we see a big problem, offer a big solution and fight for it. Now, I'm not running a race that has been shaped by a bunch of consultants. I'm not offering a bunch of proposals that have been carefully designed not to offend big donors. I passed that stop sign a long time ago. I'm running a race based on a lifetime of fighting for working families. I'm running a race from the heart. I'm running a race because I believe in you. And I believe in what we can build together. I believe we can build an America in which every person has value. We can build an America in which every child is worth investing in. We can build an America with a democracy where people, not money, are the most important things. I believe in that America. And if you believe that that America is possible, and you believe that America is worth fighting for, then I'm asking you, get in this fight. Join me. Vote for me on Tuesday. Go to ElizabethWarren.com. Pitch in five bucks. Volunteer. But be part of this fight. Because understand, this moment in history comes to us. And this moment in history will not come our way again. You will decide the direction of our country, not for four years, not for eight years, but for generations to come. This is our moment. This is our moment to choose hope over fear. This is our moment to dream big, fight hard, and win. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you. Let me begin. Let me begin by congratulating 
the New Hampshire Democratic Party as your neighbor across the river. I have been excited to see that over the years you have elected two Democratic U.S. Senators, two Democratic U.S. Members of Congress, and now it's time to elect a Democratic Governor. And I look forward to working with you to make sure that Senator Shaheen is reelected. Now, I know that there are differences of opinion in the room. I detect that. I sense that. I see more enthusiasm here than over there. All right. Thank you. But what I wanted to say, what I wanted to say is that despite the differences of opinion and the candidates that we are supporting, I know that I speak for every candidate, is that no matter who wins the Democratic nomination, we are going to come together to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of this country. Senators, Senators Shaheen and Hassan and I sat through the impeachment process, and I was stunned that there was only one Republican who had the conscience and the morality to vote to impeach this corrupt president who has contempt for Congress, the Constitution, and separation of powers. And I wanted to say that our campaign is off to a great start. We are pleased. We are excited that we won in Iowa the popular vote by 6,000 votes. 6,000. And we won the realignment vote by 2,500. And I, am pro and I am absolutely confident that with the volunteer support that we have, we're going to win here in New Hampshire as well. And I want to thank the people of New Hampshire for playing an extraordinarily important role in moving this country forward in a progressive way. Four years ago, when I was here campaigning, many of the ideas that we talked about, raising the minimum wage to a living wage of 15 bucks an hour, those ideas then were considered radical. You know what? They're not radical today. Seven states have passed a $15 an hour minimum wage. Four years ago, we talked about making public colleges and universities tuition free and canceling student debt. Radical then, not so radical today. All over the country, states and cities and counties are moving in that direction. Four years ago, we said that health care is a human right, not a privilege. That there is something wrong when we are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right. Four years ago, we talked about climate change being a global crisis. 
And four years ago, when those ideas seemed radical, the people of New Hampshire with great courage said, no, these are not radical ideas. These are the ideas that the United States of America, the working class of this country need. So I want to thank New Hampshire. I want to thank New Hampshire for helping to lead the political revolution that began four years ago, and now is the time to complete that revolution. Now is the time for us to come together to end the divisiveness the racism, the lying, the homophobia, the xenophobia, the religious bigotry of the Trump administration. And now is the time not only to defeat Donald Trump, but to transform this country and create a government and an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. That's what this campaign is about, and I thank you all very much. Aloha. How you guys doing? Hey, I want to say thank you to Chairman Buckley, the entire crew who's made this evening possible, especially because they had the wisdom to save the best for last. <laughs> The thing that brings all of you here tonight is you want to know which of us as candidates will best be able to defeat Trump. I'm here tonight to tell you why I am that candidate. The American people are sick and tired of how divided our country has become. They want a president who will actually be able to bring people together to be able to heal the divides in this country. I am that candidate. I will be that president because we are already building that coalition of support, bringing Americans from all across party lines, putting the well-being of our country first. The American people, they are sick and tired of leaders in Washington who are putting their own selfish interests ahead of the interests of the people. They want a president who will put their well-being first, ahead of partisan politics, ahead of profits, ahead of selfish interests. I am that candidate. I've dedicated my entire adult life to serving the American people. The American people are looking for a fresh, new generation of leadership. As a 38-year-old millennial, I qualify for that. Bringing a fresh perspective, bring a fresh approach to solving the age-old challenges that we face in this country. But the American people also want experience. Experience to know that this person will be best prepared to walk in on day one to fulfill that most important responsibility as Commander-in-Chief, and experience to know that this person will be able to work with Congress, to be able to cross party lines, to be able to work with leaders in both parties to actually solve problems for the American people. I am that person because I have both. I've been serving I've been serving now in Congress for seven going on eight years, very focused on our nation's national security and foreign policy, serving on the Foreign Affairs Committee, 
on the Armed Services and Homeland Security Committees. I've also been serving as a soldier. I'm a major currently in the Army National Guard, serving now for almost 17 years. And I've deployed twice to the Middle East, where I've understood and experienced firsthand the terribly high human cost of war. I bring the combination of this experience, which is more experience in national security and foreign policy than most of the other presidential candidates combined, to be prepared to walk in on day one and serve you as your commander in chief. So the choice, the choice is ours. The choice is ours to usher in a fresh new era where our White House can once again be a beacon of light, a beacon of hope, a beacon of opportunity. My personal commitment to every single one of you is to bring a soldier's values to the White House, these values of honor and respect, integrity, and service, putting the well-being and the interests of the American people first. This is the change that we together seek to bring about for our country. So if you are ready to deliver a defeat to Donald Trump in November of this year, and to usher in a victory for the American people, then I invite you to stand with me. If you are ready to usher in a bright future for every single American, a future that ensures freedom, respect, and true equality for all Americans, I invite you to stand with me. Because we know, we know that when we as Americans stand together, healing our divides, working side by side, we can truly accomplish anything. As voters here in New Hampshire, the choice is before you. I invite you to stand with me so that we can defeat Trump in November of this year. Turn out our votes on Tuesday here in Election Day. Don't just bring yourselves, bring five friends with you. And let's send a message to the nation about what New Hampshire voters stand for and the kind of change you would like to see in our country. Thank you all so much. It's wonderful to see you all here tonight. Aloha. Aloha.